Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook with Jeff Hogan, Dorn of Professional Ag Marketing. Kind of a mixed day over in the cattle futures, lower day in the hogs, but higher in the grains. And Jeff, we can't really point towards any one thing, it seemed like, that supported the grain trade today. Maybe the dollar index being a little bit lower, but obviously uh, maybe some chopping around here with the election today, huh? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of chopping around this week. And I think, you know, we'll see what the rest of the week has in store for us, of course. But um, there's just there's other stuff coming out too. You know, we've got the Fed meeting, which I think we're going to be watching that, trying to get, you know, is there any undertones being expressed there telling us, you know, is there further cuts to come in the future? Or are we are we good for now? Um, that really has been driving that index pretty hard The uh, ever since, you know, going back to September. Um, the WASDE report, obviously the grain market's going to be pretty focused on that. Are we going to take yields down a smidgen? And from my perspective, if we don't take them down this time, we've really got a solid trend that these yields are here to stay. I know we can adjust them later in the year. We have before, but it's getting uh, fewer and farther in between as we keep trending just a smidgen higher on yields. Um, there's probably some demand things that you know people are going to be looking for on the corn side of it. Um, but you know, I, the market seems pretty happy where it's at until we get some more information, until we get this week behind us, the way it feels to me. You bet. Like you said, the trifecta election, Fed decision, WASD. One question I have as a follow-up to the WASD um, is, you mentioned demand, and you know, it's been very good for corn. Our exports are running well ahead of the pace from last year. Do you see USDA making any demand adjustments upward on exports in the WASD on Friday? It's really early yet in the season. I kind of I think they've got enough information where they can bump the export number a little bit. We do have it at some pretty high levels already, um, but I, I I think they've got enough info where they can maybe bump it that twenty five million, maybe fifty million. I don't think they'll go quite that far, but I would think they would start eking that up a little bit, um, especially you know if they would if they would increase the yield even just a little bit from here. I think that gives them more confidence that we'll export that much more right and so that's my expectation a little bit better demand um don't really see the higher yield but you know it, they've been they've been pretty aggressive on their yield formulas so far yeah corn though to me has been pretty range bound i mean i think we're closing above the 100 day moving average today but for all practical purposes we're still in a range even with all of this strong demand what gives why can't we get this market up and running. Yeah, and then you mentioned the technical side. There is a couple different moving averages right in here. So I guess if you're gonna build some solid support, which I agree is mid range in my opinion, maybe this is the day that you can do it. Um, but, you know, simply said, we, we have enough corn um, and maybe, and probably still too much soybeans as far as projected ending stocks go, Michelle. So, you know, you still have that big 2 billion bushel number out there. And yes, I think we can maybe start to shrink that a little bit, but you know, it's very common for this market to be range bound as we go from here into what January, maybe February, depending on how much action we get out of the South American weather. Right. But I, I just look for this to be a very normal market, go back a few years, you know, look at the playbooks from back then. Um, I think will serve you well as, as you try to figure out where this thing wants to be in its range and, and uh, work your plan around that. Yeah, and soybeans have been range bound as well. It seems like we're getting underlying support from some demand, soybean oil, which has started to rally. But on the flip side of it, you've got the South American planting pace picking up here. You got a 550 million bushel inning stocks figure. Market has to kind of tug of war there, don't we? Yeah, and some really good rains down there in the past week and a half or so, Michelle. That's that's pretty, if you want to be bullish beans, that was hard to watch. You know, mm. it really flip-flopped this thing um, where we're getting closer to normal precipitation on the season down there. I know we got to get it planned and we got a long ways to go. Don't get me wrong. We'll we'll have more to talk about as far as weather goes. But yeah, it's, it's a marketplace that uh, has a lot to deal with. But you know what that low showed me last week is i think it kind of dealt with it and you know, we ran that january down to 980 once again and then we've been able to work higher off of that i'm kind of liking what i'm seeing there I, I i think that market's got a pretty solemn bottom into it um 
we'll see if we get into any big trade war discussions going forward or not. But um, I, I think uh, I think for now we're we've figured out you know it's cheap enough for them for the time being. Yeah, I was going to ask you. You know, you mentioned trade war. We've mentioned the election, and it seems like soybeans have been most sensitive to that election uncertainty. Don't you think? Yeah, they they have, and you know, we've went back and looked at quite a bit of that history. We've we've been through it before. I'm sure this it'll all be different again. Um, you know, going forward, but it's uh, yeah, you're you're at the we've traded beans cheaper than this uh, way back you know 2017 18 19 um, but they've also spent some time up in this you know nine and a half to ten and a half dollar area so i still think you're in the ballpark even if we do uh start getting into some trade discussions um i don't think we're completely out of the ballpark as far as where the bottom would be on these soybeans yeah when we talk about the election we talk about trade um there's going to be uncertainty if we do not know who the president is tonight, right? And that doesn't only impact the grains, it'll impact the meat sector too, won't it? Yeah, it's a pretty good size concern for us going forward the rest of this week. The the grains, you know, all the fun positions, it's very mediocre um, situation right now. I, I don't see those guys really pushing it one direction or another. Um, and, and the, and we talked about, you know, the, the price range is being fairly well established in my opinion. So not nothing too scary there, but the, almost the complete opposite is true on the livestock side, right? Where you're up at these very high levels, especially in the hogs, you got a large managed money and index money position in there. Um, I can't help, but think they're going to get a little skittish if, if we don't, uh, know the results to this election as we get towards the end of this week. Yeah. And let's talk about cattle in particular. Live cattle futures did close mostly higher except for December. It looked like those back months maybe held some support areas and kind of bounced off that. So the funds are defending their long there or what? I think so. Um, to some extent, we've also we've been a little bit frustrated as hedgers in the spread markets. You know, any rallies have been really focused up on front the front end, Michelle, especially as you know, you realize the cash prices that we're seeing there versus where the, the discount that we're trading in the futures. But you know, it's been hard to get rallies in those back months. So we must have somebody bull spreading this thing that today is maybe reversing some of that. And that could all be the larger uh, speculative position too, right? Where they're kind of softly long this uh, this cattle market right now. And then like you say, a day like today, you, you maybe get rid of some of your front end exposure here, um, but go ahead and park it out in the back where, you know, those futures are trading discounts to the cash that we saw this year, right? So year over year, $10 discounts, it's maybe not a bad place to park your bet for now and kind of sit on the sidelines for a bit. Yeah. Any thoughts about cash? Uh, this week, we had seven weeks higher. Last week took a little break, but only 23 cents lower on the weighted average. Will we be able to keep steady money going this week? I think that's your that's your higher end of your expectation. Now this cash market's been impressing me a bunch, so maybe I'll be proved wrong on that again. Um, but they've had a hard time breaking this market. It hasn't been from lack of trying. It's just there's a fairly big suction noise coming out of the you know, Kansas and further south. And I I was concerned we would get ourselves into trouble with some larger cattle and, and plenty of supply in Nebraska and Iowa, Minnesota, Michelle. But so far, all those numbers are getting pushed to the south um, and we're getting along just fine. So I don't see what's different this week. The futures are a little bit lower, but they're a long ways from having to become reality as far as the uh, delivery period goes. Product value to maybe, you know, just smidgen lower week over week. So I I think it's going to be very interesting again. And uh, I, I would think we could trade some solid, uh, solidly um, steady cash versus last week. I think that should hold us in place. Another interesting market, the hog market. Looked like we put in a reversal yesterday. Some follow through today. Is the market topping there, you think? Well, it's pretty unusual, as you know, for us hog traders to actually be kind of the the in the spotlight as the market that's good we're not really used to this uh, type of environment but sure. you know that thing is crazy good crazy high look at 
you know, what's going on, the product values over there. And, and one of the things that's been supporting the product is on the belly side. And that is a very fickle market as, you know, as, as folks well know. So, you know, it's easy for that one to drop even, you know, 30, 40, $50 and um, do it very rapidly. So that's what we're kind of watching. It's showing just a tick of weakness here so far this week. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. But I wouldn't be expect I wouldn't be surprised at all if we take big chunks out of that market just because we had pushed it so high. Um, the other things we got supporting this all quite domestic, you know, the rib market. Um, that's got to be somewhat seasonal too. How much is the nice weather helping support that? I just think there's a lot of things here that kind of would say uh, the path of least resistance is is probably lower. Yeah, but you feel like this was a demand-led rally, not necessarily supply or, I mean, the funds are record long here or got record long. So that helped too, didn't it? Oh, 100%. Um, they're, they're probably the the core reason, but, you know, they needed some reasons to put their money in the hogs instead of elsewhere, right? Because the cattle market's been no sluggard either. Um, yeah, I think it's a little bit more on the demand. We did come in shorter on supply um, than expected, about similar to last year but shorter than our expectation. And that is very important. I don't want to, um, I don't want to, you know, discount that too much because so if we had, you know, two, 3% more supply, that'd be a problem, but there, you can't argue that the demand of this thing, um, both on exports and I think uh, maybe more importantly, so the domestic is a big factor. Thanks so much. Jeff Hogan Dorn with Professional Ag Marketing.